All right, very good to you. Today we are going to continue with chapter 8.2. We are looking at carbon nanomaterials. Based on what we have discussed in chapter 8.1, is that we talk about allotropes. And we say that allotropes are the different physical forms of the same chemical elements. The example that we have used is on carbon allotropes. And we say that carbon allotropes are and the examples for carbon electrodes include diamond, graphite, and amorphous carbon. And we say that the elements must be the same. But the structure and the arrangement will be different for these different forms of allotropes. So, looking at this particular site here, we are looking at carbon electrodes that are of nanomaterial. What does nanomaterial mean? If you still remember when we were talking about nanomaterials in nanoscale back in chapter 1, we say that they are of nanoscale, which means that they are very small. Um, and these examples are the ones that can fit into the nanostructures. We have fullerene, we have graphene, and we have carbon nanotubes. So fullerene, graphene, and carbon nanotubes. I'm just going to move on to the next slide. All right, so I'm just going to begin with the first example of the nanomaterial that is also a carbon allotrope. So we have fullerene here. Let me talk about fullerene. Uh, there is this scientist in the Australian National Museum that basically discovered fullerene. His name is Dr. Bill Birch. So in the late 1970s. What fullerene is, is also known as the Buckminster Fuller ring structure. It consists of 60 carbon atoms that are commonly bound in, uh, in the pentagon and hexagon structures and mainly hexagonal sphere arrangement. So what this is trying to say is that it consists of the five and six carbon ring. So if I am going to write this down here, so if it's pentagon, it consists of the five carbon ring, five carbon ring. If it's a hexagon, it consists of the six carbon ring. And you can see that on this particular diagram at the top here. So you can see if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, it will be the hexagon structure. If it's one, two, three, four, five, it will be the pentagon structure. So if I'm going to use the soccer ball, for example, and I'll just highlight this briefly for you. So the five carbon will be that black spot. That black spot will be the five carbon. You can see that you have one, two, three, four, five. And if it's the six carbon, you can calculate using the white spot. One, two, three, four, five, six, and that is generally how a fullerene looks like. I'm just going to move on to the next slide. So when we are talking about a fullerene structure, it says spherical fullerenes are made of carbon atoms commonly bonded in a sphere-shaped structure similar to graphite. This leaves the delocalized electrons in the structure and possibly of electrical conductivity. At the same time, Fullerene exists as discrete molecules instead of covalent network solids, which means that the delocalized electrons cannot move throughout the entire substance. However, fullerene can add superconductors if metal atoms are added to the structure. Before this, we talk about diamond, we talk about graphite. This is a diamond, you have one carbon being covalent bonded to four other carbons. In a graphite structure, you have one carbon being covalent bonded to three other carbons. And in fullerene, you have one carbon being covalent bonded to three other carbons as well. Different resources have different information in terms of the electrical conductivity of fullerene. Some resources say that the delocalized electrons do not move within the structure because it exists as a discrete molecule. So I like this, this is very important. It exists as a discrete molecule instead of the covalent network solids. Before this, when we are talking about diamond, it is of the giant covalent lattice structure. If you are talking about graphite, it is of the layer lattice structure. Fullerene here is a discrete molecule. It is not a covalent network solid, which means that it cannot conduct electricity. If we look at 
the delocalized electrons within the structure because the delocalized electrons cannot move unlike what we see in graphite that in graphite the electrical conductivity is present because delocalized electrons can move around within the structure but in this case because fullerene is a discrete molecule delocalized electrons cannot move throughout the entire substance but it can end as a superconductor so some results will say that it can still conduct electricity in better after it's present within the structure as you can see in this diagram here so if you have a fullerene structure with metal atoms within E then it will now be able to conduct electricity and it can partially to do with the metal spinner uh, very good electrical conductor and in a way it allows that fullerene to conduct electricity as a whole uh, and I did mention to you that some resources say that fluorine can't conduct electricity but or, it's, or some resources say that they can conduct electricity but technically saying they can only conduct electricity if the metal atom is present within the structure why? because fluorine exists as a discrete molecule it is not a covalent never solid it cannot have the delocalized electrons moving around the structure and that is the reason moving on to the next slide so fullerene has incredibly high melting points due to the high amounts of energy required to break the covalent bond within the substance and it says that they also have high tensile strength as a high number of covalent bond can resist force applied to the fullerene in multiple direction so fullerene has a high melting point and you probably know the reason is because of the strong covalent bond that exists within the structure each of these carbon aerotropes, even though they have different properties, but the general idea behind it, you have one carbon be bonded to another carbon through covalent bonds. So their covalent bonds must be very strong, which is why if you look at in general, the melting and boiling point for diamond, graphite, and fluorine, they are relatively high. Of course, diamond has probably one of the highest because of how the carbon is being arranged within the structure. But within fluorine itself, it does have a high melting point because of that strong covalent bonding that exists. You have high tensile strength. You also have high numbers of covalent bonds that resist force applied to the fluorine in multiple directions. Move on to the next slide. So now we are talking about graphing. Graphing is a single atom tape layer structure with the same arrangement as those there in graphite. So when we were talking about graphite, we say that it is of the covalent layer lattice structure, one carbon being bonded to three other carbons. In the graphing, it is quite similar. You have one carbon being bonded to three other carbons, as you can see in this particular diagram. The only difference between graphing and graphite is that graphing here is a single atom tape. It is only of that one layer. It is only a single atom tape layer. The ring is very thin, which means that it has properties of graphite, as you can see at the bottom here, it has high melting point, it has a good thermal conductivity, so good heat conductivity, it has good electrical conductivity, which is quite similar to what is present in graphite. But bear in mind when we are talking about graphing, it is only of a single atom T layer, unlike graphite that has multiple layers. Moving on to the next slide. Alright, continuing on graphing here, as mentioned before, graphing and graphite has some similarities, but not all of them. When we are talking about graphite, we say that they has one layer, and then there's another layer. Within the layer, they have covalent bonds. Between the layer, we have the weak intermolecular forces. But when we are talking about graphing, it is only of a single atom tape. So it says graphite is easily molded and flexible. And say this is increases its potential for use within electronics and for use in non-metal-based electronic wires. And say this is because graphene has high tensile strength and can be spun into wires. They have high ductilities. And it says that this high tensile strength feature is not present in graphite because the sheets of carbon can slide past one another easily due to the weak intermolecular forces that are present. So the point that needs to be made here, when we are talking about graphing, even though it is one carbon being commonly bonded to three other carbons, it is of a single atom tape sheet, which means that it can conduct electricity because it contains a one delocalized electron. If you still remember when we are talking about graphite, we say that carbon has four valence electron. If you have one carbon be bonded to three other carbons, you have one delocalized area that is dangling, whether at the top or at the bottom of that structure. So it allows that structure to conduct electricity. Graphene can also conduct electricity, 
because it has that one delocalized electrode, but at the same time, it has this property, which is not found in graphite, which is being high, having high tensile strength. So it says that high tensile strength is not present in graphite because the sheets of carbon can slide past one another within a graphite structure. But in graphene, you do not have one sheet sliding past another sheet because you only have that one single uh, atom tape sheet, which means that you can actually bend it, you can actually turn it into wire, which means that this feature can be potentially useful in electronic wires because, because of the properties that I've discussed being high, having high tensile strength and having high ductility. Moving on to the next slide. So, uses of graphene is a replace silicon as a basic of computer chips and circuits due to a high electrical conductivity. Be used in desalination plant. Water under pressure can pass through the thin layer, but dissolve in this. Cannot be used to control electrons where it is an advantage for an electron to be no matter. Be used in organic photovoltaic cells. Be used to reinforce composite materials. So many of these materials that you see here are materials that must have good conductivity, electrical conductivity. And the only way that can be done is to use graphene here. And the reason why graphene can be used is because they have high tensile strength. They are um, data, which means that because they can be turned into wires, they are very useful as a result. So that is something for you to think about when we are talking about graphing. Make sure you are able to differentiate between graphite and graphing. Once again, when we are talking about graphite, you're talking about covalent layer lattice structure, one layer after another layer, they're bonded to one another, um, or layer to layer through the weak intermolecular forces or weak dispersion forces but in graphene we do not have that scenario because it is only of a single atom tape which means that that structure now can be used for these particular purposes because it still retains its good electrical conductivity at the same time you are able to change the shape and it has high tensile strength and these are the uses for graphene moving on to the next slide so carbon nanotubes. These carbon nanotubes are an intermediate between fullerene cages and flat graphene. Some textbooks may say that carbon nanotubes may be more similar to fullerene. Some resources say that carbon nanotubes is more similar to graphene, but it is an intermediate between them. How? When you talk about nanotubes, it is very long structure. It is a very long hollow structure. It was formed from graphene. It says the diameter of these cylinders is very small around one nanometer wide so 10 times minus 9 meter which means they are very small they are nano scale um, and since while they can be millions of times longer so the ratio between the the length and the diameter the length can be unlimited it can be as long as what it wants this is a carbon nanotube so it's similar to graphene because it is that it is uh, of that flat shape the one atom take a uh, flat shape that exists but in this particular case as a nanotube at the same time you can see the carbon ring you can see the hexagonal ring that exists within the structure which means that it has both properties of the fullerene cages and the flat graphing that we have discussed so as mentioned below here is a shape of graphene rolled into cylinder and cap on the ends by half a fullerene molecule. So properties of both the graphene and fullerene uh, molecules. Moving on to the next slide. So scientists are interested in nanotubes because of their unique strength. Uh, good electrical conductivity according to nanotubes depends on their shape. Some are conductors, some are semiconductors. They are good or they have good heat conductivity, strong forces of attraction to one another. So when we are talking about carbon nanotubes here, one thing is both properties of fullerene and graphene, which means that it's able to conduct electricity because it still have the delocalized electrons that we have discussed, but this time around you're talking about a long tube. And because of that, it still maintains the properties from graphene and from fullerene that we have mentioned before. Moving on to the next slide. So it says here, carbon nanotubes are up to 300 times stronger than steel. Rope made from nanotubes with a diameter of 1 cm could support a weight of over 1,000 tons. 
Nanotubes are already being used in high-performance sporting equipment, better conductors of electricity than silver. Since nanotubes are essentially wires, they are much narrower in diameter than metal wire. They offer the possibility for extreme miniaturization of electrical circuits. It says that better thermal conductors than diamond nanotubes can be used to transfer heat away for electrical components, stronger than killer fibers, stain resistant nanofibers that never require washing every day available, capable of absorbing more gas or improving. Alright, the point here, when we are talking about carbon nanotubes, they have a lot of strengths as compared to the other materials for each property that they have. They are very, very strong because they are made of carbons being covalent bonded to one another. They are good electrical conductivity. They are something that you cannot find in diamond. Or in this case, they are better electric conductivity uh, conductors than silver because of the delicate electron that is present. And because they are very small, you can actually use it for, for very tiny wires or electrical circuits as a result. As mentioned before here as well, they have better heat conductivity as compared to diamonds. So they can transfer heat away from electrical components. They are very, very strong because they have high tensile strength. Once again, you must remember that they do maintain properties of fillering and properties of graphene, which means they have tensile strength and they are very strong as a result and they can be used for wiring, they can be used for electric circuits. So there are many advantages of carbon nanotube as a result. And they are capable of adsorption. If we talk about nanomaterials, they are able to adsorb. What does adsorb mean? Which means that the materials, or in this case, the impurities will be on the surface of the carbon nanotube. Which means carbon nanotube have large surface area to volume ratio and that actually allows the adsorption of impurities to be occurring, allows it to carry these impurities away. So it is useful or more useful than charcoal that we have discussed and charcoal is a type of amorphous carbon that we have discussed to remove impurities so in this case it is more useful because it has larger surface area as a result but it has a very small size which means large a surface area to volume ratio will be a lot greater because of its small size my on to the next slide so this is a particular diagram from your textbook on the World War Concept card. You can read through this. There are some examples that are going there. We are going to go through this World War Concept card. This is the latest level of materials made of extremely thin and strong carbon fiber. Replace the car's steel body panel. It can be used in car's roof, doors, bonnet, and floor. It says this panel also double up as the car's battery. It says the car's weight can be reduced by 15%. There is a potential for cutting weight still further. So uh, using carbon nanomaterials we are able to reduce the weight of the car at the same time increasing the tensile strength of the structure allowing you to be safe within the vehicle and so this material can be recharged by harnessing the energy generator when the car breaks plugging into the main electrical electricity grid as you can see here so in this case electrons can both bear in mind that electrons move within the circuit so allowing in this case it to conduct electricity uh, within the vehicle itself. So you see the body panels are discharged as the car's electric motor is used. So electrons here is moving within the vehicle, allowing the car to move or to be powered as a result. And they did say that this panel doubles up as the car's battery. It do power the battery as well. Why? Because this carbon fiber that has been used or the carbon materials carbon nanomaterials that have been used they are good electrical conductors which means that they are able to be used as the car's battery or to power the car's battery as a result moving on to the next slide all right so this is the final slide that we have Nano fabric is a high tech protective coating can be manufactured using materials such as carbon nanotube fibers is it a protective Clothing is only half the weight and thinness of regular clara. At the same time, it maintains high tensile strength. So we did talk about high tensile strength here. There is a very important feature of carbon nanotubes. And the reason why it has high tensile strength is because it imitates the structure of the graphing structure, which is that one atom take. At the same time, it is of carbon being cumulative bonded to other carbon, which means that now the structure will be a lot stronger as a result, which means that it has high tensile strength as a result. But the good thing about carbon nanotube, because they are of nano size, they can be used in very small components or equipments, 
uh, usually you will find it in electric circuits and you can also find them here in nano fabric so for protective clothing you can use carbon nanotube because they have high tension they can protect the person from potential shocks and and that can protect the person from any injury and why nanotubes can be used as as, uh, as such because they have this property which is being or uh, having a high tensile strength so there's something for you to think about when you return to the lesson or to the class and i'll discuss this more as well in class make sure you do complete the questions complete the questions on this particular chapter which means chapter 8 is now done so we discuss more when we go back to class and you're very welcome to be your question on social stream or you can email the question to me as well and then we'll have a discussion on that so i'll see you then